In my playbook tonight, another major plant closure in Indiana. This time it's a Whirlpool refrigerator factory in Evansville, Indiana. On Friday, 1,100 workers got the pink slip. Come mid-2010, they're done. Whirlpool's shipping those 1,100 jobs south of the border to Mexico. And that may not be the end of it. The company's still deciding whether or not to relocate their Evansville product development center. If they do, that would kill another 300 jobs. The problem is people aren't buying the products, right? Whirlpool's second quarter sales fell 18% this year, so they're moving their operations south of the border, 1,100 jobs, 1,100 families wonder, now what do we do? And I can't help but think, what if Whirlpool didn't have to wrestle with health care costs? Let me bring in Scott Paul, Executive Director of the Alliance of American Manufacturing. Scott, did you know this was going to happen? I mean, whether it's a, be a Republican president or a Democratic president, is this just the global economy and this is the way it is? What, what about that? Actually, I think it's more than the global economy. I think it's a deliberate set of policies we have in place on health care, on trade, and on a number of issues. The fact is we've had 50,000 plants closed down over the last 10 years. We've lost 5 million manufacturing jobs. In Indiana, they've lost one out of every four manufacturing jobs. They used to make televisions, elevators, refrigerators there. Now they're not making much of anything. How do we get and it back, Scott? How do we get this back? Well, we got to do a couple of things. One is we do really need to rein in health care costs because American producers face health care costs that they don't face in Canada or Europe or Asia or Mexico. Second thing we need to, need to do is provide the right kind of tax incentives. Right now, we have tax incentives that are great for Wall Street, great for oil and gas exploration, great for outsourcing, horrible for trying to produce things in the United States. So the Obama team has got to kick it in gear because a lot of these folks, a lot of these laborers, they voted for Obama. This isn't the change they can believe in. I mean, they're losing their job and the same thing is happening under his administration. That's exactly right. I mean, there were a lot of promises made during the campaign, and I think the important thing here is to look at what happened to the Democrats after NAFTA passed in 1993. They lost the Congress in 1994, yeah. and passing NAFTA, not doing health care, was a big part of that. He really does need to reorient this trade policy. We have problems with China. We have problems with Mexico. We have to stop this outsourcing, and until we get this manufacturing economy back on track, it's going to be tough to win the votes of blue-collar workers. And I would imagine this is going to come up at the G20 in September in Pittsburgh, just a few weeks away. It really will, and I think the challenge that we face, Ed, is that all the world's leaders use this bogeyman of protectionism yeah. when they all have manufacturing policies, they all have industrial policies. They cover their the United, backyard. They do. The United yeah. States has nothing but an outsourcing policy. We need to change that. We need Obama to give us a manufacturing policy. Scott Paul, good to have you on tonight. I appreciate your time. Thanks so Thanks, much. Ed.